Hello everyone and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. So this is just a set of short talks about things to do with life in the universe that I think are interesting and I hope you will do as well. And in the middle of a pandemic seems like a good time to think about life in the universe, life in its widest context. So today I want to talk about this question. Is water the universal solvent for life, the universal liquid for life? Now, the first thing we could do is uh, wonder whether uh, a life form needs any form of liquid at all. Could you have a life form that's completely gaseous, made of gas, or a life form that's made of solid, a crystal life form? And I'm not going to talk about that today, although I will talk about it in another talk. But today I'm going to assume that we need some sort of liquid to carry out chemical reactions. Now, it's first worth noting that you really are a liquid life form. You're about 60% water. Even your bones that seem to be very solid structures have about 30% water. So next time you walk out into the street when you get a chance to do that, um, you can look at other human beings through alien eyes and realize that they're just giant bags of water with some solid structural support materials thrown in that make them look like they're solid creatures, uh, but actually those support materials just stop them from turning into a puddle. We are basically liquid creatures, majority uh, liquid in our body. And we might wonder, why is that the case? What is going on there? Well, the liquid is, of course, the material in which we carry out chemical reactions. Because it's a fluid, things can move around much more easily than in a solid state. And in that fluid, lots of ions and molecules move around and come into contact and carry out all those chemical reactions necessary for biology. For example, molecules come together, uh, snap together and form long chains like proteins or DNA. So a fluid is a very good way to move things around, to carry out all those uh, molecular interactions, ionic interactions and all that other good chemistry needed to build a living thing. Liquid water turns out to be quite good at doing this. It's very good at dissolving things. You'll be familiar when you go into the kitchen that you can dissolve salt and sugar uh, in water. And it can also dissolve small organic molecules, carbon containing molecules like the amino acids that are the building blocks of proteins or sugars that can come together to make long chain carbohydrates. All those building blocks, those Lego blocks of life dissolve quite well in liquid water. So it's a very good solvent for doing chemistry in. It also turns out to have quite a wide uh, temperature range. You can find at one atmosphere, you'll be familiar with the fact that water freezes at zero and it boils at 100. That's quite a wide temperature range. And it means that we find evidence for liquid water on the ancient surface of Mars or in the moons of Jupiter like Europa or the moons of Saturn like Enceladus. Liquid water is actually quite pervasive in planetary systems in other planetary bodies so under quite a wide range of temperature and pressure conditions, we can have liquid water. So there's two things to realize about liquid water. One is it's actually quite good for doing chemistry. In, and two, it's cosmically abundant. There's a lot of it. So quite apart from its useful chemistry, if you happen to be a life form emerging on a planet somewhere, whether that be ancient Earth or some planet orbiting a distant star, it's quite likely that you'll be confronted by liquid water as a possible solvent for doing biology. And so it's presented to any experiment, if you like, in the origin of life. So perhaps it's not so surprising that when life emerges on a planet like on the Earth, it ends up incorporating this quite abundant cosmic material, water, and using the liquid state to do chemistry. Now, it should be pointed out that water is not perfect. It's no good getting this idea that it is somehow strangely perfect for life. In fact, many chemical reactions involve getting rid of water. For example, when two amino acids come together to make proteins in your body, uh, when they snap together, they actually get rid of a water molecule. And it's called a dehydration reaction because it's being dehydrated. It's getting rid of water. So it's not like life uh, regards water as some perfect panacea for doing biochemistry. There are actually chemical reactions where life is trying to get lid, rid of uh, water from its internal structure. There are other things that can uh, misguide you into thinking that water is somehow strangely perfect for biology. You may have had the experience of going out into a village and seeing a village pond frozen in the winter and there's a layer of ice on the surface and beneath it there are fish swimming around. And this is an unusual thing. It's something we all take for granted. But in fact, it's, it, it's unusual that the solid form of water, ice, floats on the liquid form. In most materials in the universe, the solid form of a material is more dense 
than the liquid form and it tends to sink. If you had a bath of liquid iron, for example, and you drop in some solid iron, it will tend to uh, sink to the bottom. So solid materials generally tend to sink to the bottom of uh, liquid materials, but that's not the case with water. The solid form floats on top of the liquid. And this results in this strange phenomenon of a village pond with a solid layer of ice on the top and the fish swimming around uh, inside the pond. And some people will look at that and say that is really uncanny because if water sunk when it was a solid, the pond would freeze from the bottom up and all the fish would be dead. So there's something strangely um, almost Su uh, supernatural about water that it's finely tuned for biology that it happens to float in that odd way allowing fish to live underneath the frozen icy surface. Well the first thing we should notice is that that's completely the, the wrong way around. Of course biology adapts to the physical and chemical properties of liquid water. There's nothing strangely, uh, there is something strange about water, the fact that it floats, but there's nothing strange in terms of its benefits to biology. Um, biology adapts to use liquid water and to use the characteristics of liquid water. So if it floats, then biology will evolve fish that can swim around underneath a village pond and survive. And we should also note that things can actually survive in frozen water. For example, this is one of my favorite creatures, the wood frog, Lithobates um, sylvaticus, that lives, lives in North America. And during the winter, it buries itself in the leaves and the soil of the forests of North America, and it produces glucose in its bloodstream that stops uh, ice crystals from forming. Essentially, it goes into a deep freeze. And then in the spring, uh, when, the, uh, when it thaws out, it jumps off and disappears off into the forest as if nothing had happened. So here's an example of something that can tolerate living in freezing conditions. And the point is this, that the fish swimming underneath your layer of ice in your village pond are not somehow doing something that is strangely reflective of the uh, fine tuning of water for biology. If in fact we were uh, made of a biochemistry that used a solvent that sunk, like most materials in the universe, we can see that things can evolve to live in freezing solutions. But nevertheless, water is a very good solvent for doing biochemistry. And the question is, could it be anything else? And people have thought about this since the 60s and 70s. And there are some ideas about possible alternative solvents that could be good for biochemistry. Liquid ammonia is one idea. Ammonia, NH3, is also quite an abundant solvent in the universe. You can find it in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Um, it's thought that there's a subsurface ocean beneath Saturn's moon Titan, and to keep that ocean in a liquid state, it might have to have some sort of antifreeze compound, and one possible candidate for that is ammonia. It could be up to 30% ammonia. So ammonia is common throughout the universe, and we would expect it to be common in other planetary systems as well. Ammonia is interesting because it's got a lower temperature range in liquid water. At one atmosphere, the atmosphere you and I are familiar with, its temperature range is minus 78 to minus 34. And some people have said, well, that's not a problem. We could imagine an alien life form living in a particularly cold environment. Maybe liquid ammonia is very good for these low temperature environments, uh, such as the ocean beneath Titan. Maybe in those cold environments, liquid ammonia life forms exist. However, the other thing we can do with liquid ammonia or ammonia in general is to pressurize it. And if we pressurize it to about 20 atmospheres, its boiling point becomes about 50 degrees, not dissimilar to liquid water. So we could speculate about beings living on super Earths, orbiting distant stars, exoplanets with very thick atmospheres, much higher atmospheric pressures, where those atmospheric pressures pressurize uh, the ammonia and create a liquid at sort of 30, 40 degrees in which maybe similar sorts of biochemistry as ours could occur. But these are all speculations. Ammonia has some other interesting characteristics. It's about 10 times less viscous than water. So it might actually be better for moving molecules around. They have an easier time diffusing and moving through that liquid. So here we have an example of a solvent that might actually be an improvement on liquid water. It does some other interesting things as well. If you take some liquid ammonia, you can dissolve metal in it. And when the metal dissolves, it forms um, all of its electrons in that metal are, are released into the liquid ammonia. Ammonia only gets solvated electrons, strange, eerie colored solutions of dissolved metals in ammonia. And the reason why that's relevant for life is that life likes to move electrons around. Uh, when we gather free energy from the environment, we use electron transfer chains. And the movement of electrons is central to all chemical reactions going on in living things 
and all of the biological reactions of extracting free energy that we need to grow and reproduce from the environment. And ammonia is very good at dissolving electrons, creating these solvated electron solutions. So one could start to speculate about solutions of liquid ammonia being very good in which biology could uh, use liquid ammonia to move electrons around to carry out chemical reactions. But again, all these things are speculation. There are some bad things about ammonia at very dilute solutions. It has very alkaline pHs, pHs of about 11. And it turns out that uh, ammonium at these ammonia at these high pHs is quite annihilative. It tends to destroy molecules. But of course, that's a very uh, earth biology centric view of things. It could be that if you evolved a biology in liquid ammonia, it would evolve to be able to deal with these chemical properties of ammonia. So there are other sorts of liquids people have imagined. Uh, liquid methane found on the surface of Saturn's moon Titan at uh, temperatures much lower than a minus 150, minus 160. Uh, liquid ammonia lakes have been speculated to be places where you could have maybe life. We don't know much about uh, liquid methane as a place to dissolve um, uh, molecules, as a, as a medium to dissolve molecules in. We know that it's perhaps less good at dissolving these ionic compounds as liquid water. But you never know, liquid methane could also be another type of solvent in which we could build biochemistry. So our knowledge of these sorts of liquids is even less than our knowledge of liquid ammonia. People have suggested uh, sulfuric acid as another type of liquid in which you could have a novel type of biology. Most of us are familiar with sulfuric acid from our uh, high school chemistry days as being extremely reactive, uh, but you can do chemical reactions in there and maybe that's another type of solvent. So as we go out uh, into other liquids like hydrogen fluoride, ideas become more crazy and less bounded by knowledge. At the current time, we really don't know whether you can have a life form that swaps out liquid water with another solvent. Liquid ammonia still seems to be the most promising liquid. As I say, people were thinking about that in the 1960s and 1970s. And to this day, we still don't really know whether you could actually build a life form with an entirely different liquid. But it's a fascinating question uh, to do with life in the universe. Maybe we will answer that question by carrying out more uh, experiments in the laboratory to look at some of these strange fluids and see whether they could incorporate complex biology within them. Maybe we can test these ideas directly by looking, say, at the ocean beneath the surface of Titan and seeing whether it does contain liquid ammonia and whether that liquid ammonia can support a strange type of life, or at least try and understand the chemistry going on in that ocean. So it remains an open question. One of the most fascinating questions, I think, to do with life in the universe, what is all this liquid water doing in us? Can we swap it out with an entirely alien chemistry? And are there creatures out there in the universe that use a different type of liquid. Thank you again for joining me. Take care of yourselves.